and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We're standing strong, we're standing tall, and we've come today to worship his holy name. We've come today to cast down burdens and cares and lift them up to God, a God who can fix it, a God who can take care of all of our needs. This is God's house where Jesus is Lord. As you worship today, whether you're in your car, your home, sitting quietly, or just whatever you're doing right now, take a moment to reflect on the goodness of a gracious God. For some of us, need to have a little talk with him and to tell him all about our troubles. For he will heal, hear our faintest cry. And what I like about him, he'll answer by.
we bow our heads this morning, many hearts weigh heavy for what we've witnessed over the past several weeks, what we've heard. But our hearts were made to rejoice of what we were able to see in the land of the living this week. The first among first in the nation. A black woman, a person of color, elected as vice president. Where we saw an elder elevated, the oldest president in recorded American history, 78 years old, to be inaugurated as the president of the United States. But in saying all of that, the key word in a very lengthy statement is united. Our prayer is that we become a united people. Our prayer is where we can acknowledge our cultures, but our color ought not make a difference. We should stand out in the uniqueness of who we are, individually and collectively. Not because I'm pink and you're blue, but because God is God. And in God infinite wisdom, God can be any color God wants to be. So to an all-powerful God this morning, an omnipotent God, and an omnipresent God, we bow our heads. And we say thank you, God, for the seen and the unseen blessings. Thank you, God, for the promise of hope that it's on its way. Thank you, God, for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you, God, for moments of clarity, for we all need an epiphany where we can see your son, Jesus, clear and walk and go in a different way, with a different mindset, determined to do your holy will. And we say in the name of our ancestors, when the dusty march is over, may we find an appointed place around your throne to praise your name forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need you.
They put down their nets and followed Jesus. And when he had gone a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the ship with the hired servants and went with Jesus. Thus sends the reading of the word. Join me for threefold. Amen. Oh, 
and the vines grew out of control. I removed the hedge and allowed it to be devoured. Look at America. I turn you now to mark the first chapter where we find in this scripture John the Baptist had been put in prison and Jesus had entered the territory of Galilee. And I need to tell you that Jesus entered Galilee and he came preaching. I usually like to use this text when I'm teaching to new students who are taking a preaching class at the seminary level for the first time. It's a very simple message, really, to be saved. It has two points to it. It doesn't preach all day long. The exegetical work is implied, and the homiletics of it all are tight. But what it simply says is Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. And if you've never been to the Holy Land or seen a description of it, the Sea of Galilee sits down and it is anchored behind a hill. So to get to the sea, you've got to go over a slope. And every time we drive by the coast of Oregon, I think about how just to get to the coast, you have to kind of go down before you get to sea level. And that's how the Sea of Galilee was. It wasn't a very big sea. It's 12 miles in length. And at its widest point, it's about eight miles. But because it's in close proximity to an even larger sea, the Mediterranean Sea, Michael, it gets all kinds of winds and disturbed weather. And that's why we read of how turbulence would be created by the blowing wind on the Sea of Galilee. And it would disturb people when they were taking a passage across the sea to get to the other side. It would interrupt fishing because some fish that kind of were near the water's edge were sent out further into the sea because of the rushing mighty wind. Jesus walked by the sea. And I just want to talk for another seven minutes about epiphany moments. There were two sets of brothers who had moments of epiphany, moments of clarity when they encountered Jesus. Sometimes when we encounter our true calling, whether we be clergy or lay, but when we all meet Jesus, he clears it up for us. I'm reminded of a song that Jimmy Cliff sang. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. All obstacles that were in my way are gone, and it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. The scripture does not explain what fishing was like on that day, but what it does say, they were pulling in their nets. They were done. But when Jesus came by, Jesus just had a word for him because he came preaching, and he preached just 
two points. And the first point actually is found in verse 15 because they were the same words of John the Baptist. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The first point is he wanted them to repent. Turn aside from whatever was unjust, whatever was sinful, whatever was morally wrong, whatever was unloving, whatever did not benefit the whole of community, whatever wasn't saving, whatever wasn't healing, whatever wasn't feeding. Turn aside from it. Repent and simply say, I'm sorry and need and will and intend to lead a new life. was at hand, was spoke louder 
than the words of the people. Demonstrated louder Jesus' actions and Jesus' promise than the actions of the people. It even God's imperative even required when I, as Marilyn sang today, was traveling wrong to straighten up my walk and straighten up my talk and not think that I was too big of a person where I didn't stand in need of correction. And none of you are that big either.
but never God's face. Let nothing, nothing turn you around. God never said it would be easy, but God did say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The road has not been easy for me, but the power of the Almighty God is just like purple is to lavender. It's strong, it's bold, it's dominant, and it outcasts any shadow that might overtake it. May God's peace, power, and love be with you forever. Till next time.